Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Driver's Garage. I am Scott. Today, we're working on my 1965 Impala SS. We are going to be installing a Hydromax hydraulic clutch kit from American Powertrain. Follow along. Okay, a little update for those who might not know. This is um, my 65 Impala SS. I've owned it since 1996. That long, yeah. Uh, it's currently got a blueprint engines, 400 power router version, which is not using any kind of power routers right now. Behind it is an American Powertrain uh, T56 Magnum, 6 speed. And um, when we, for, I assembled this last year and it was running for oh, basically a year. And then I had an issue with the clutch, which not really the clutch itself, um, but the throw out bearing. I'm not sure really what happened to it. So uh, I should, we, we installed it, the whole thing to begin with using the original style factory clutch linkage, right? We, you know, clutch fork, clutch uh, Z bar and all that, and a regular throw out bearing. And somehow the throw out bearing is making all these ugly noises. So we're gonna find out what's wrong with that. But first, we gotta get the engine out of the car. Now we already took one step. We got the hood on the car, off the car and on the roof. It's sitting on the roof right there. So follow along as we we um, install this new Hydromax system from from uh, American Powertrain. And we are going to pull the motor with the transmission to fix this because the, the engine and transmission is one big unit. Uh, the transmission is pretty good sized. And it's not so easy to pull out by yourself uh, on jack stands unless you're built like a pit bull. So uh, I'm going to pull the engine and transmission out first. And then we'll see what happened with that throw out bearing. And, and then we'll move on from there. Uh, big thanks to American Powertrain for suggesting this kit and helping me out with it. So uh, follow along and um, we'll see how this goes. Okay, here we are inside the car. There's. A, I'm going to start it up. I'm going to run it for a minute because I got the doors closed. The wind was blowing in a lot of leaves. Um, those are the fans. Come on, baby. Okay, there is the engine and transmission out and sitting on the floor, though I'm going to balance it with the, with the um, engine hoist. Start putting on the, uh, the Hydromax uh, clutch system from American Powertrain. And get rid of the clutch fork set up. This clutch fork set up. And you can hear the jingling of the, of the bad throw out bearing in there. I can get rid of this piece here too, which is for the clutch pivot ball. Yeah, that's bad. What happened to the throw bearing? Um, for some reason the bearing seized on the shaft and then the um, the face of it just sheared right off look at that that's crazy the uh, kit we're installing this is uh, American Powertrain's Hydromax clutch kit uh, 
sure what part number this is. Um, well, this is a universal kit. I, I forget. They have uh, model specific kits. So, includes a bearing cover for a typical uh, for a T56. Uh, the hoses. This is your little reservoir. This is the actual master cylinder with brack firewall bracket. The actual master cylinder is a wheelwood. And the throw out bearing, hydraulic throw out bearing with its bleeder hose. And then the shims to get the depth correct. This is very, very, very important to have these, uh, these correct. And these bolts here that you see there, those bolts there, those are for, uh, for the go on to the bearing cover that keep the uh, hydro uh, this from spinning and then uh, these these little brackets here uh, allow you to remote mount the reservoir tank which is what I'm gonna have to do and uh, what else have they got in here uh, here's another here's a threaded rod that goes to your, your clutch pedal well I see they have some applications where the um, they have some applications where the threaded uh, that actually include a gas uh, the clutch pedal as well. So if you start off with a car that doesn't have a clutch pedal, you can get going with that. This is already a four-speed converted car. It was originally an automatic car, my 1965 Impala. Not going to need this. Not going to need the clutch fork. Not going to need the upper rod. Not going to need this broken throw bearing. Uh, clutch pivot ball. Not going to need that garbage. What we're going to do is take off this bearing retainer and put on the one that comes with the kit. Now, they're, they are the same. Um... They are the same, but I decided I was just going to use the one that came with the kit anyways. I mean, this one's not even clocked right over here, so there's like the, the holes over there. It's supposed to be like in the 2 o'clock position. So, I'm going to take off the old one, and then I'm going to bolt on the new one. And, uh, work from there. Now on. Uh, for the four bolt uh, bolts, they're Allen heads with beveled, uh, beveled, for the beveled. I put a little drop of uh, RTV or uh, Loctite blue just a tiny little drop and then on this too I got to tighten this a little better I might have to just tighten it with a little pair of pliers I guess and they suggest 15 foot pounds of torque they also suggest putting this this retainer stud um, at a two o'clock position so when you slide this on it's hold it's it's holding it like that Let's see like so I'm not sliding it all the way on yet I got there's an o-ring in here I got to lube up before I try to slide it over the bearing sleeve bearing cover sleeve and I don't want it to to uh, they suggest there's a you can see the o-ring in there I'm gonna put a little brake fluid on that so it'll slide off on and off easier and then I can take a measurement from the face of this once it's on to the face of this and measure the depth how far it sticks out Okay, so one of the critical measurements that you need to get is the de depth between this and this. And it's one of two measurements that's really critical. So I'm not just going to use a tape measure. I'm going to use this, thing, uh, my dial caliper. And what we're going to do is just measure from, if I can do this right, I'm trying to do this. All right, here's one I use for uh, construction work. So let's see what we get here. Oh. 
dua it's hard to keep it flat on the bearing I now have 1.611. Let's double check this again from the other side. Just want to make sure that everything's good. And this is where you want to take your time because you want your measurement to be accurate. Okay, so one of the critical measurements that you need to get is the de depth between this and this. And it's one of two measurements that's really critical. So I'm not just going to use a tape measure. I'm going to use this, thing, uh, my dial caliper. And what we're going to do is just measure from, if I can do this right, I'm trying to do this. Go. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I got a good technique here. Well, this is perpendicular to that. One point six five inches, approximately. So, on the instructions, I'm gonna do it for instructions. The instructions have a, a set of a worksheet where it says the measurement from uh, measuring this, um, this to here. You can write it down here for future reference because it's gonna be a while before I get the the. Uh, bell housing and clutch back on the on the uh, on the engine so I can measure the depth of the bell housing to the face of the clutch um, I gotta fix the leaky oil pan first on the engine and I gotta get the engine on the engine stand to do that so it's gonna be a while so I wrote it down on there so I won't forget Okay, at this point, I have the bell housing, the clutch, and the flywheel all on the transmission, and I need to measure the the uh, bell housing face. That's the face of the bell housing that the transmission bolts to down inside to where the fingers are on the clutch pressure plate. Now, that's the depth. So what you're doing is you, we already have the measurement from the throwout bearing to the face of the transmission that bolts to the face of the bell housing. Now we need the depth. Now the measurement is very critical because it's the difference between those two that gives you your free plate. All right, your pre your your throwout bearing is, does not put pressure on your clutch face all the time. You don't want that. That's not good. So, because it'll never let the clutch fully engage uh, or, or be fully uh, aw, um, what's the word? It'll, it doesn't let the clutch fully be locked on so you're actually putting power to the wheels. So it'll cause it to slip and then you'll have problems with your flywheel and your clutch will get smoked hot and all that. So. You need a little bit of space. Now they recommend a, thou, um, a tenth to uh, two tenths of an inch. That's about right. It, our clutches are different. Some of them like light, smaller uh, closeness. They, the, the other ones like farther apart. This, um, this McLeod clutch seems to like a little bit more. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna measure down into the depth, and then we're gonna me take that measurement 
and take the measurement from the 1.65 inches that we measured between the bell, uh, the bra bearing to the face of the transmission, and there should be somewhere between a tenth of an inch and two tenths of an inch, and uh, and that's what we're going to do now. Um, all right, so we have the master cylinder in for the clutch system. It's remote mounted. Uh, that's the that's the reservoir, I should say. That is the reservoir that is mounted up here on the firewall next to the coil, and then there's a hose that runs down to the master cylinder. As you can see, it's kind of buried underneath the hydro boost. This is where the original it's mounted, where the original uh, K. Uh, push rod for the clutch came out and we have the line connected from down here you can see the, the line connected to the to the mount uh, the throw out bearing and the trend in uh, that's on the transmission and we have it filled with fluid and now we just need to bleed it okay we have the uh, the bracket here installed in the uh, hydraulic clutch uh, unit uh, installed on the other side and uh, I used five of the six bolts uh, that that fit the hole uh, the original clutch uh, linkage rod and you can see how the rod goes up to the clutch uh, the clutch pedal up there amongst all the rats nest of wiring and um, we cut the, uh, this, this rod, the, the threaded rod that they give you is longer than what you need. So they cut, you cut it to length and then you use this union here. And what I do is I don't, I don't make it so, uh, the rod so long that there's no adjustability in it. So it allow, I have some adjustability left here and then there, you can adjust it up there, up at the, where it connects to the. Uh, get the clutch pedal up there. There you go. And the reason why I got five bolts in there, it only came with four, but I have another threaded. It's a 5 16 uh, uh, fine thread. And you can see the one bolt hole there, uh, I would have to drill through it. Now, uh, your brake pedal uh, area Let's see your brake pedal up there, the rod going through the brake pedal up there. Your your master cylinder and booster are attached to the firewall. There is three layers of steel uh, on the, you can see the part one layer right here where this lip is. And so I'd be drilling through three layers of steel just to get one more bolt in. So I think five will be enough to give us some strength and keep it from moving around. As you can see, look at this. I'm gonna just show, see? I'm going to get the light in here so I'm not blocking the light. So you can push down on it and, you know, the the uh, firewall is not flexing one bit, which is good. Because that's what you do not want when you hit the brakes or the clutch. Well, I just opened the uh, bleeder screw and pushed the pedal a couple of times and already I got air coming out of, the, out of it all by itself. It's just kind of what you call gravity bleeding, I guess. I'm just gonna let it run for a little bit. And I keep track checking the top reservoir to make sure I don't run out. I'm just using a uh, uh, Gatorade bottle with a clear hose. Gatorade bottle I grabbed out of the out of the uh, out of the garbage can, I was a Gatorade drink yesterday. So, and as you can see, it's just pushing some air out because the entire thing was, you know, obviously there's the reservoir down to the master cylinder, and then the master cylinder line to the throwout bearing. That's all full of air when you start off. So I'm going to just let it sit here and run for a minute until I stop seeing bubbles come out. When I stop seeing bubbles come out, I'm going to close everything up and try to keep the hose in the brake fluid when you close it. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to make a mess. It's uncomfortable because you're working on the car. But the object is to try not to let air get back up into the line.
I'm going to double check the master cylinder, make sure it's not going right and dry. Okay, after a minute or so, a couple minutes of bleed, gravity bleeding, I started pushing the pedal a little bit. I had to top off the brake bleeder, uh, the brake reservoir, excuse me. And you can see there's still air coming down the lines. I'm pushing here, I'm pushing the brake pedal. Pedal is getting some tension on it now. It's getting harder to push. I'm pushing it with my hand because uh, I'm reaching in from underneath the car. As you can see, there's still some air in the lines. So this this is one of those things that takes patience when you're working on a car. Especially when you're starting with such a dry system. I mean, there's nothing in the airline, the line between the brake res master cylinder reservoir and then the re uh, from the master cylinder to the throw out bearing, there's nothing in it. So, I'll let it sit there for a second. Now, there probably won't be this much air if you're going to be um, just, if you have a, the reservoir attached to the master cylinder itself. Because you don't have that extra hose to go through. I'm going to close the breeder line here and see if I uh, get my lighting going here. I'm going to close the breeder line up. I'm just going to use my fingers here. There we go. Now I'm going to push on the brake, on the clutch pedal, and see if we get anything. See if we get any engagement. Oh, look at that. Oh, the mine. A little stiff to push with my arm, but then my arm is not my leg sitting in a seat. I have the interior back of the car and I decided to use the American powertrain shifter handle that came with it I was using a Hurst shifter earlier but I wanted to try this one again the uh, pedal adjustment is pretty good though right now I am setting I'm pushing it basically to the floor to get full engagement so right now I'm kind of you have to have a pedal stop with these American powertrain setups. <laughs> that means when you you don't want to overextend it. So you want the pedal to be obviously you want it to have full engagement of the clutch so you you can shift gears, but you don't want to overextend the throw out bearing and damage it. Right now, the way it's set up is it's basically the pedal hits the floor, and that's full engagement. I'm going to readjust that. You have to do whatever you need to do for your own specific vehicle. I was thinking about putting like a bolt through the floor here, a full threaded bolt with a nut on the top and a nut on the bottom. And using that like a, and because you can adjust it if it's a full threaded bolt. And using the bolt as a pedal stop. But I did test it and it moves back and forth just like it's supposed to. The, can the gauge. The... I did test it and uh, it moves back and forth just like it's supposed to. And it runs. Well, I haven't really road tested it yet, but moving it back and forth in the garage. 
I still need to put the hood back on the car before I road test it. I want to be road testing with a hood on the roof. Now remember, maybe you gotta have the pedal stop. The car, now we only, we've done everything, we just kind of rolled it back and forth in the garage, just testing the pedal feel. You really don't have to go out on the road for that. You just wanna see where it's at, whether or not you can shift it back and forth between like first and reverse, and let the car roll back and forth. Figure out where the pedal starts to engage the clutch and starts to move the car, and where the pedal, how far the pedal goes down, where you're, the clutch is fully engaged and the car is not moving, all right? Now, uh, you have to have a pedal stop behind that. If you have a lot of travel that your pedal can go to the floor behind that, see it's like three inches from the floor where you're fully engaged, your clutch is fully engaged, you definitely want to build some sort of pedal stop. That's kind of application specific depending on what kind of car you have. Um, American Powertrain does recommend it, and I do too. And the reason why I recommend it is because at work, where I work at the Muscle Car Factory, we have a 62 Impala sitting in there right now that we're going to have to replace the hydraulic clutch throw bearing in it because it was overextended. The previous owner of the car never put in a pedal stop on it, and the throw bearing was overextended and stuck, and the car was stuck in neutral, basically. Um, the clutch was pushed in, a pressure was being pushed on it, so it was definitely a problem. This kit was super easy to install otherwise. I mean, I have to say, if I really wanted to do it, I could have done it in a weekend, but I was doing a bunch of other stuff as well. So, uh, I mean, the car was getting a lot more other work done, which you can see in another video. Big thanks to American Powertrain for the, all the help on this Hydromax system. I like it. I like it a lot. It's super easy to install. Uh, if all you have to do is take your transmission out, say you got a four-speed and you just want to take the transmission out, you could probably and you got a lift available, you could probably do this in a weekend or less, maybe even a day if you're pretty quick. And uh, and if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Mine again. My name is Scott. Thank you for watching.